Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Bible Lessons and Prayers YouTube channel. And this is your five minute word of the day. I am Elder Derek Strickland, and I am so glad to be coming to you all real quick. Like sometimes we just need a short little something to get us through the day as it relates to God's word and to what it is that we're going through, right? So before I get into this, listen, I'm just churchy, right? I want to let you know that I am saved and I am sanctified, baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost and that with a burning fire. I got no other mind but to go on with Jesus. Now listen, I want to give you a quick word of the day and I want to let you know this one thing, now listen, come close. This is what I want you to know. It's not your fault, right? Say that with me. It is not your fault, all right? So my brothers and sisters today, let's get deep into the profound biblical narratives that address the question as old as humanity itself. Who is to blame when misfortune strikes? Our focus is on the Gospel of John chapter 9, verses 1 through 3. Here we encounter Jesus and his disciples as they pass by a blind man from birth. The disciples reflecting a, a common belief on their time and they ask Jesus, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? You know, the question is steeped in assumption that all suffering is a direct result of a specific sin. Yet Jesus responds both enlightening and, and liberating. He says, neither have this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. And these words, it's not your fault, right? Lies in a powerful truth that transcends time and circumstances. This truth speaks directly to the heart of every person who has ever felt weighted down by the belief that their struggles are their punishments for their sins or the sins of their forebearers, right? You ever been in this situation where things were happening to you and you're trying to figure out, Lord, what happened? What did I do? <laughs> First, let us understand, understand the scriptures does not diminish the realities of consequences from sin. The Bible is clear in teaching that our actions have effects and there is a natural order of cause and effect that God has established. However, Jesus emphasizes here that the uh, erroneous notion that every hardship, every physical ailment, or every challenge is a direct punishment for sin. In declaring neither has this man sinned nor his parents, Jesus is redirecting our focus from seeking blame to seeking purpose. Let me say that one more time for the people in the back. He, he redirects our focus from seeking blame to seeking purpose. He is teaching us that often our difficulties and trials serve a greater purpose in God's divine plan. The man's blindness was not a punishment, but it was an opportunity for the works of God to be displayed in his life. Man, right right there is a you should be running right now down your street, up and down your your bedroom. You should be running right now. Beloved, this is a perspective in a this perspective is transformative, right? It invites us to look at our struggles through the lens of what God can do in and through them, rather than getting entangled in why and whose fault it is. We are uh, experiencing trials instead of seeking into guilt or blame. We can lift our eyes to God, seeking how we might uh, use our situation for his glory and for our growth. Right. Let me say that one more time. We want to seek God on how he may use our situation for his glory and for our growth. Moreover, this passage teaches us about the compassion of grace and the grace of Christ. Jesus does not condemn the blind man or his parents. Instead, guess what he do? He heals the man, demonstrating God's power and mercy. In our lives, too, Jesus meets us with the same compassion. He sees our pain. He understands our struggles and offers healing and hope. Man, who wouldn't serve a God like that? In conclusion, my brothers and sisters, I want to let you know one more time, it is not your fault. It's called to trust God in God's sovereignty and his redemptive plan for our lives. 
It is an invitation to release ourselves and others from the burden of misplaced guilt and to embrace the possibilities of God's grace working in and through our circumstances. Now, may this message inspire you to, in your life and in the lives of others through the compassion and redemptive lens of our Savior, Jesus Christ. I am Elder Derek Strickland, and this has been your five-minute message. Why don't you go ahead and subscribe to this channel, smash that like button, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace.